The Big Island of Hawaii. From majestic mountaintops to incredible coastlines, this tropical paradise truly has it all. The volcanic activity here is second to none in the United States, as is the marine wildlife. So there are plenty of reasons to check this place out. The native Hawaiian people have a very special history and culture and are happy to share the beauty and splendor of their homeland with respectful visitors. I'm Chris Sessions, and my wife and I spent about eight days on the Big Island in the month of August on vacation with some family, and I'm here to share with you some of the things we did and places we saw that I thought were outstanding. So if you're looking for some ideas on what to do in the Big Island, you're in the right place. So with that, let's jump on in. Keep in mind it takes two or three hours to drive from one side of the island to the other, so you're going to want to do yourself a favor and pick an area to focus on each day. Know where your stops are so that you can make the most of your time and save on gas money. We're going to start on the northeastern edge of the island, which includes the city of Hilo. This area is very green and forested and lovely for that reason, and there's no better place to start than Akaka Falls State Park. Here you will find yourself on an easy half mile loop trail through a very nice ravine with lots of plants and of course you'll see a humongous waterfall. Just be prepared to pay a fee when you arrive, which varies depending on how many people you have with you, but for four people it was about $30. And this waterfall is awesome, easily one of the most beautiful sights to see on the island. Don't want to miss it. Next up, I want to tell you about the Umama Falls experience. As you can see, this is an opportunity to go ziplining, so if you're an adrenaline junkie, this is going to be a great option for you. We definitely had a blast. The tour includes a total of nine zip lines with incredible views. You'll see the ocean in the distance, and it takes you right over this nice little river, a series of waterfalls. It's really beautiful and really one of a kind. We went with the zip and dip package. So after zip lining, you get a chance to cool off by swimming. You have a very nice little swimming spot you get to enjoy. And really the only bad thing I can say about this is it does cost about $300 a person. So we understand that might not be worth it to everybody. If you do splurge here though, you're definitely gonna have a fun time. It was one of the funnest things we did on the Big Island. But if you're on a budget, fear not. The next recommendation is totally free and just as adventurous. Just north of Hilo is the Pepeekeo Scenic Drive, a four mile stretch of road that takes you through some of the densest jungle you'll ever see. It may not be super long, but it honestly feels like you're transported to another world far from civilization. This drive in and of itself is an absolute treat. You will also find here a botanical garden where you can pay something like $20 to go in. We passed on that, but it looks interesting. And the highlight for us was discovering this sweet little pool beneath the road where the water gushes out of this mysterious looking hole in the rock. And it's just begging to be swam in. That's exactly what we did. There are some sweet ledges to jump off of Obviously, use plenty of caution when doing so. The water's not the clearest, and there's potential to hurt yourself on some rocks. But there is nothing more amazing than the feeling of getting into some cool, refreshing water on a hot, muggy Hawaiian day. I don't even know if this place has a name, but we fell in love with it. It's really a hidden gem and well worth checking out if you happen to be in the area. The Hilo Farmer's Market is super popular, and for good reason. Come load up on souvenirs at the booth selling arts and crafts, 
and get yourself some fresh local fruit. It's so good, especially the sweet white pineapple. I had no idea this existed before this trip, but I'm telling you, it's mind blowing. Then head on over to see the Japanese garden here in town. Take a nice relaxing walk amongst the many ponds and bridges and uh, enjoy the beauty. And best of all, it's all free. I highly recommend you take a detour to see Waipio Valley, also known as the Valley of the Kings. This is a place of historical significance where Kamehameha the Great was raised in hiding and is also home to the island's biggest waterfall. It's well worth coming to see the views from the top. Sadly, access down into the valley has been closed to visitors as of this year. Now let's head into Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. I'll focus on this main section of the park, which is probably where the stuff you came to see is located. Starting from the Kilauea Visitor Center, it's a short walk to the Crater Rim Trail, where you'll get your first glimpse into the massive volcanic caldera that is Kilauea. This is one of the few places on Earth where you can get this close and personal to an erupting volcano, so it's definitely an amazing experience. This giant lava lake in the bottom of the crater has risen 450 feet in just the last year, so it's a very humbling reminder that we as humans are simply at the mercy of the forces of nature. I also like the steam vents along this trail. It's also worth mentioning that you can drive along this trail and stop at various points rather than walk the whole thing. But for a more adventurous hike, I recommend hitting up the Kilauea Iki Trail. This trail will take you down through an awesome green lush forest into the Kilauea Iki Crater a smaller crater attached to the main Kilauea crater. This area is no longer active, but it was erupting as recently as the late 50s. So it's pretty awesome to get to walk down through the bottom of this crater and realize that the ground you're standing on was hot lava not too long ago. It's one of the more popular hikes in the park, and for good reason. This is a 3.3 mile hike, and I recommend doing it early to minimize heat exposure. Right next to the Kilauea Iki Trail, you will find Nahuku, or the Thurston Lava Tube. This is one of the coolest things to see in the park, and it's an easy half mile path that takes you through the lava tube, accessible to everyone young and old. It's just well lit enough in there that you don't really even need a flashlight, and it's pretty much smooth pavement the whole way, with the exception of a few stairs. Something you don't want to miss. Then I say take a scenic drive down the Chain of Craters Road. You'll get a lot of views of lava fields and the ocean. There are stops you can check out along the way. There is a hike to some Hawaiian petroglyphs, which we did not do, simply because there's no shade. It's not ideal for the middle of the day. This road takes you all the way down to the coast where you will see the Hole Sea Arch. One of the more interesting features here. There it is. Now you don't want to miss the opportunity to come back at night for lava viewing. Yes, you can see hot lava glowing. It's pretty far away, but still a mind-blowing experience. And another great reason to come here is just for the night sky. It's very clear and beautiful here. One more thing I want to mention is the Mauna Loa Road. Now, this wasn't a highlight of the trip for us by any means. But it is a nice drive. It starts out as a two-lane highway, and then gets kind of rougher, and then gravel. But uh, kind of fun if you're looking for another way to fill more time. At the beginning of the road is the lava tree molds, which are sort of interesting if you're into geology at all. So it might be worth checking out that alone. There's an overlook at the top of this road, which 
we couldn't really see anything from, but maybe that's just due to the weather. It was rather cloudy and rainy. This is also where backpackers start their multi-day trek to the peak of Mauna Loa. That's about it for the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. We have to stop here for now to keep this video from getting too long. But our journey is far from over. We've still got the entire western half of the island to explore. So stay tuned for part two coming your way soon. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs>